Hey folks, so this is our last Friday chapel and uh, you know, I wanna start out just by saying this, you know how grateful I am to have spent this time with you. Uh, you know, I know that this past part of the year has not been what any of us would have hoped for and such is life, right? And we, we move forward. Uh, I definitely have enjoyed my time spent with you folks on, on Fridays with chapels. Wish we could have ended it in person, but this is the next best thing. So what's, what's the, the topic I wanna kind of talk to you today, kind of to leave you with to think about? And it's this idea, allowing your life to be interrupted. You know, for the seniors out there, for all of you, for me, for the faculty, for the staff, just for all of us, making a commitment to allow our lives to be interrupted. This was brought to my mind, you know, years and years ago, uh, listening to Greg Boyle, Father Greg Boyle, who works with gang members. Some of you may be aware of this story, but it's a very powerful one. Father, Father Greg was, you know, he's trying to get ready for a, for a baptism thing, and he got this, that, and the other thing, and in walks this woman who was a heroin addict, uh, was known to be very, very difficult. And he, he's trying to like brush her aside, brush her aside. And then she breaks into tears and they have this amazing connection. And he said, you know, I'd almost forgotten people are never interruptions. Beautiful line. I'd almost forgotten people are never interruptions. And we see in the, in the Bible that Jesus actually celebrates those interruptions again and again and again. So we're going to look at one today. One, one that kind of has an interesting twist to it. So, so this is where, this is a little story about, about a centurion. Now, you know, a centurion at that time, many of you know this, if you're, especially if you're a history lover, uh, centurions were Roman soldiers who were put in charge of a hundred other soldiers, century, centurion, hundred, that's, that's where it comes from. So, so these were people actually of great authority and power. It was an elected position. These were people who would have had a lot of power, would have had a lot of, a lot of sway. You know, literally, they could make life and death decisions for other people, including their own troops, including uh, those in the occupied land of Israel at that time. I mean, this, this, was, a, this was a big deal. And, and for Jesus to, to have a story like this and to, to offer some healing into this was, was revolutionary because we also have to remember, not only were centurions extremely powerful people, but they actually were part of an oppressing army. They were part of an occupying army, occupying modern day Israel at this time. And they, they were known for being a very, um, yeah, very sort of tight, uh, draconian, um, militant group who, who, who absolutely allowed no dissent whatsoever. So for Jesus to have done anything with this group was amazing, much less for him to have offered healing into this group was incredible. So that's where we pick up the story. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said, I will go and heal him. Now, now right there, I will go and heal him. Jesus being a, being a, uh, you know, being Jewish was not supposed to enter the house of a Gentile, the house of a Roman soldier. But here he's saying, I look willing to do it. Again, we, we miss that little piece. But again, even there kind of tells you the story's pointing in a different direction. The centurion replied, Lord, I, did not, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And to that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. That's incredibly beautiful. Now, now what, was that, what was that great faith there that, that, that the centurion had? Well, here's a number of different ways to do it. I mean, obviously he had faith in Jesus. He had faith in the Lord that, that the Lord could bring healing in this situation. That's really, really important faith. And, and I think there's another sort of broader category of faith here, too, that, that's worthy of mention. It's fascinating that this centurion had made the decision to seek out Jesus to heal his servant. When this was a man of such great power, the idea of, of, of doing that would have been um, absolutely countercultural in so many ways. 
Again, he was a Roman centurion. He would have thought he would have gone to the Roman gods to ask for the healing of his servant. And even that, you know, part of me just wonders, and I wonder it out loud, a centurion who's deeply worried about his servant and his servant's health. This is a man who could have five other servants at the, at the snap of a finger. Again, he was in charge of a hundred troops. And then here's this servant. And he cared enough, ready for this folks, to be more than his position. He cared enough to be more than his position. And found a humility that asked for healing and he ends up finding it. Jesus is able to heal the servant. Those types of interruptions, I think, are what Jesus celebrates. And maybe that's part of the faith that Jesus was amazed at. There's only a couple times in the Bible where it actually says Jesus was amazed. This is one of the two. And he, he's, I think he's, part of it was just this amazement. It was like, here's, here's someone with such a big heart that even despite all the power, all the prestige, all the possessions, but despite all the power, all the prestige, all the possessions, he's willing to put that all aside and ask someone else for help to help a servant of his. That is allowing for an interruption into our lives. And there's two interruptions that are celebrated here. You know, one is clearly the man allowed his servant's suffering to interrupt his life. And clearly Jesus then in turn allows the centurion to interrupt his. Friends, that's what to think about moving forward. Allow for those interruptions to take place. They're beautiful, they're sacred, it's where you'll learn, it's where you'll learn to be curious, it's what will actually get you out of your head and move you past judgment of other people into the simple place of a serving heart, which is what faith is all about. It's all about that soft, serving heart. So that's what I close with, friends. I wish you all the best, especially to those graduating seniors out there. I wish you just a great, great, great life ahead. You know, for all of you, I speak on behalf, I'm sure, of all the clergy here. We're here to help in any way in the future we can. And finally, just on a personal level, thank you. It's a great deal of gratitude. Thank you for allowing me to, to be with you on Fridays and to serve in the ways we've served together. So wishing you all the best, folks. Allow your life to be interrupted. That closes today's chapel.